let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Defiance is Barakat Selassie's third novel. It represents his deep conviction about fundamental human values under stressing times that at a deeper level test our common humanity as anchor not only of our need to be our brother's keeper, but goes beyond. In their individual actions, including their readiness for sacrifice, three main characters of Defiance provide an inspiring example to all of us. Barakat has had an amazing life, more than 20 years in government, law, and diplomacy, 35 years in full-time university teaching and writing, a lifetime working for human rights and democracy. He's an emeritus distinguished professor of African studies and professor of law at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, also was attorney general of Ethiopia's emperor, Haile Selassie, and as he relates in his memoir, The Crown and the Pen, he struggled for justice within an archaic system, bedeviled with imperial intrigues as he insisted that the emperor and his government follow the law and let him follow the dictates of his conscience. This occasionally landed him in trouble and finally led to his dis- disaffection and disagreement over issues of liberty and people's rights, particularly as it concerned the autonomy of Eritrea. He was banished to a distant province and eventually escaped to his native Eritrea, where he joined the armed struggle for independence. He was appointed to head a commission to write the Constitution of Eritrea, earning him the name Father of the Constitution. He also served as the Eritrean representative to the United Nations, the author of over a dozen books, including works of fiction, his most recent defiance. It's an honor to welcome Barakat Selassie to This Week in America. Barakat, welcome to the program, sir. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you. I've heard so much about you and your program. Well, I thank you for that, and I've heard so much about you and just a fascinating life, and we've could have spent the entire hour for the interview just in talking about what you've accomplished, <laughs> and we'll weave some of that into the, uh, the conversation today. We're talking about your newest book, which is Defiance, and I gave a brief synopsis of, of Defiance in the open. Why did you decide to write this book? What was the inspiration for this book? That's a good question. Uh, several years ago, I was listening to a radio interview in French. I happen to speak French. Uh, a woman was giving her interview of her life and her lost husband. Uh, and she came to Ethiopia. She's a French woman. She came to Ethiopia in search of her husband was lost, gone. He was killed. But she wanted to find out where he ended. Uh, but all her pursuits or her attempts were in vain. So she was very unhappy, and she went back home empty-handed. When the mention of her husband was given on the radio, I remember it was my friend, my old friend, uh, an Ethiopian of the Oromo National Group uh, who studied uh, in Europe, in France and England, and I was in England at the time when we were studying, so we, we met a couple of times. He was a brilliant man, and he was a revolutionary. He was one of the uh, leaders of what they call the All Ethiopian Socialist Union, or Meson for short. And he went to Ethiopia at a time when there was a revolution, uh, but the revolution had been hijacked by the military. And he joined the military thinking that he could actually influence them. Unfortunately, it ended up bad for him. He was eventually assassinated, uh, and uh, his wife, a French woman, and her two daughters uh, were left wondering what happened to him. So I decided to write a story based on this. Uh, The characters in my uh, novel uh, are three. Uh, Stefan Schmidt is a European of German origin, with a British mother, English mother, and then Rashid is a Sudanese uh, who was a college friend of Stefan. Uh, but fortunately for Rashid, some uh, soccer scouts discovered that he was a brilliant uh, player. So 
so they recruited him, and he became one of Europe's most outstanding soccer players, and he amassed fame and fortune. Uh, so Rashid stopped this college and became a football, a football star, or rather soccer star. Yes. And then the third character is a young lady by the name of Isabel. She happens to be the daughter of the, the man I just mentioned and his, her French mother. Uh, so the, the story is based on her uh, life of deprivation. She lost her father when she was three or four years old. And, and that, of course, that great loss at a critical time in her life affected her so badly that it became an obsession. Eventually, when she grew up, she, she decided to go out to Ethiopia and discover his remains and bring his remains for a decent Christian burial, as she put it. Well, she and the two other characters became friends. They had common values, uh, and th those common values bonded them together. Yes. Uh, in my novel, I give a context of uh, a great deal of confusion and chaos. Uh, the 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 uh, uh, fact that governments uh, became uh, uh, devoid of morality, uh, there were no law and order. The usual norms that binds people together were lost, even in our country in America and in several European countries and in Africa. All this became uh, a, a very important background for me for 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 the story. And then, of course, uh, to complicate it, there is the phenomenon of uh, mass migration. Migrants from Africa crossing the, the, the uh, Mediterranean Sea, some of them drowning, and then, of course, from the Middle East, from Syria, crossing through Turkey into Europe. And then in our continent, Central Europeans trying to cross over to America and being stopped all of these, uh, and then in Southeast Asia, in a place called uh, Myanmar, a place used to, that used to be known as Burma. Yes. Uh, the Rohingya are the people who are Muslims in a, in a majority Buddhist state, and they became the victims of a great deal of uh, a, a, a kind of ethnic cleansing, and they had to, to run out of the country. 800,000 of them were driven out of their own country. Uh, and these are some of the uh, uh, backgrounds to, the, to my story of the three people. But the story really is centered around uh, Stefan, uh, uh, Isabel, and Rashid. The book that we're talking about is Defiance in the Time of Chaos and Exist Existential Threat by our guest on the program, Barakat Selassie. You'll find a book available at Author House, the usual places. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to get information on this book, just one of many written by our guest on the program today. Let's talk about the book. And the book is is telling a, a remarkable story, the, the, the bonding, the special relationship that these three had. But in addition to us enjoying that story, you're talking about a lot of issues, a lot of issues, quite honestly, that are in the, the world headlines today, aren't you? Absolutely, absolutely. Unfortunately. Yeah, yes, uh, exactly. I, I, I cite in, in my book at the very beginning uh, a very important American uh, writer, a political philosopher by the name of uh, Samuel Huntington. Uh, he wrote a book called The Clash of Civilizations. And in this book, he has a very important passage, which I'm going to read. It says, if demography is destiny, population movements are the motor of history. In centuries past, differential growth rates, economic conditions, and governmental policies have produced massive migrations by Greeks, Jews, Germanic tribes, Norse, Turks, Russians, Chinese, and others. 19th century Europeans were, however, the master race of demographic invasion. Westerners con conquered and, at times, obliterated other peoples, explored and settled less densely populated lands. The export of peoples was perhaps 
the single most important dimension of the rise of the West between the 16th and the, and the 20th centuries. And the writer wonders whether those people in Europe and the United States that have been opponents of the migrants coming to their shores might read this passage uh, and the book from which it is extracted and change their negative attitudes towards positive acceptance or at least tolerance of the other. What do you hope that people, and that's, that's interesting, what do you hope people take away from reading the book Defiance? Once again, it's an, it's an excellent story, very well told. These characters, diverse characters, are all human beings, and we relate to them in that sense. When it's over with, what do you hope that we take away from reading the book? I think we are, my principal message, Rick, is that we are ultimately human. Yes. We have a common human bond. We are human first. And then Americans and Europeans, Africans, and breaking down also Nigerians or Ethiopians and so on. So we are members one of another as, as human beings, and we are facing some common uh, uh, challenges nowadays. Uh, climate change, which is uh, which actually devastating economies and people throughout the world. Uh, it has not been appreciated yet by some people. Uh, and then there are, there are, of course, the usual uh, suspects, <laughs> uh, the usual uh, problems of uh, uh, inter-ethnic strife, conflict. Yes. Right now, for instance, uh, in Ethiopia, there was a very moving, a very uh, promising movement a year and a half ago in which a young, very promising young man came forward, became prime minister, and wanted to uh, create peace between Ethiopia and Eritrea. Unfortunately, his program has been stalled uh, with uh, all kinds of conflicts uh, confronting him. The same is true in other parts of Africa and elsewhere. In Europe, people, uh, in the face of mass migrations, they feel threatened by different types of people with different religions, different, different uh, languages. There's a sense of threat to them, a kind of existential threat by these newcomers. If they accept them as human and actually create a system among governments in Europe and elsewhere of how to accommodate people who come to their shores, uh, there will be no problem. There will be no problem. In fact, these people Migrants create the United States of America, and these people would, would add to the value of uh, existing values uh, in, in Europe and elsewhere, assuming that we accept them, first of all, uh, accept them as human beings facing danger, uh, and also uh, understand why they left their, their homeland. Nobody leaves their homeland unless they are forced by circumstances. Well, and that was, and I want to talk about your circumstances, because uh, I, as I mentioned in the beginning, you were attorney general of Ethiopia uh, with a disagreement with the emperor. You were banished. You, you went back to, to your home country, involved in that country, establishing a constitution, representing the country in the United Nations, now over here with a distinguished teaching career. How do you feel about what's going on in, in the world now? Are we... You, you talk about democracy, you talk about globalization in many of your books and many of your speeches that you, you do all around the world. You, you deal with young people every day in college at, at the university there. Uh, are you optimistic that maybe we're going to work our way through this? Uh, I, I do indeed. I do, Rick. Uh, I'm glad you raised this question because I am uh, con congenitally optimistic. It can't change me. <laughs> uh, and that has been, of course, part of my problem. <laughs> but but uh, <laughs> because I deal with the, with the youth, uh, I am encouraged by their ideology, idealism, by their dedication to causes, uh, and they revive my hope in humanity. Uh, I, I think we have to hope for humanity. We have to think big. We have to think positively. Uh, and our leaders, our leaders, beginning from uh, our individual nations, I have to understand that there is no other way except uh, common understanding, except mutual help, mutual acceptance, uh, peace and uh, stability based on rule of law, 
based on an ethics of acceptance of the other as your brother. These are my aims, these are my beliefs, and these happen to be also the beliefs or the values uh, that uh, define the character of my book. Yeah, and the book is Defiance in the Time of Chaos and Existential Threat. Uh, Barakat Selassie is our guest on the program. That's B-E-R-E-K-E-T, Selassie, S-E-L-A-S-S-I-E. The book's at Author House. You'll find it at Amazon. You can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You will be moved by the characters, the struggles they go through. They have unexpected challenges along the way that really test their tenacity, their resilience, and I'm thinking that happened to you a lot in your life, didn't it? Where there were these unexpected challenges and it really it had to be a, a, a check for you, your conscience as well, wasn't it? Absolutely. Uh, it's very perceptive of you. Actually, my belief in humanity and my uh, sustaining belief uh, are the values I cherish, uh, which I try to, be, to, to bring into the book. I did face uh, some challenges similar to the ones my characters are facing. Uh, I overcame them as a result of the help of good friends and good people, but also because of my uh, belief in myself and in the, in the values I cherish and in the ideas I, I, I promote. I believe in humanity, common humanity. I believe in the human brotherhood. I, I believe uh, more particularly in the importance of law and order, the rule of law, uh, and uh, right now, for instance, we are facing in America and some parts of Europe, England, for instance, are facing problems of, of power. Uh, how do you deal with power? You deal with power by submitting it to uh, fundamental uh, values like democracy and accountability, the rule of law, and, and so on. So these have been my guiding light throughout my life. Uh, and they will continue to be. Barakat Selassie, our guest on the program. Boy, time going by so quickly. The the novel is Defiance in the Time of Chaos and Existential Threat. And I know you're working on a couple of other books. I think uh, at least one will be out next year. What are, what other projects are you working on? <clears throat> I am uh, going to write a sequel to an earlier novel called uh, Deliverance. Uh, it's based on the new developments in Ethiopia, uh, but the new developments have been uh, checked by unfortunate incidents. And therefore, I'm going to write another one called Deliverance Deferred. Uh, that's going to be more political. Uh, I am also thinking of uh, writing the, th the uh, third part of my uh, memoir, which is going to to be about the border problems in Africa. African countries were defined by European imposed artificial borders, uh, dividing peoples, sometimes even dividing families. And we have to go beyond these artificial borders and create a more uh, sustainable, more sensible uh, kind of uh, framework under which you can live uh, in Africa. Uh, this is about Africa. So that is another book I have in mind. But I have other books also. If, I, if, if God gives me time, uh, I, I will. I, I, uh, there's, there are a lot of books in me yet. <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> it, based on experience and, uh, and your philosophy of life. And I hope that you are granted uh, a good deal of time so you can write more and we can have you back in the program to, uh, to talk more. I'm going to take a, a minute or so left to the end. As you're watching the politics now, democracy, constitution, all of that thrown about unfold in the United States. And you go back to, to standing up to the emperor, uh, uh, Haile Selassie, and being banished for that because you were trying to do what was right. Do you see comparisons there? Do you look at that and go, these are really tumultuous times we're going through now? Well, now you are, you are going to force me to, to, to say a little about American politics. I, I didn't intend to, uh, but what is going on now in America, including the impeachment, which is very unfortunate, uh, uh, fascinates me because it, it also lies in my area of research interest. I am a lawyer. Uh, constitutional law, law is my specialty. And the, the, the uh, articles of uh, the Constitution of the United States 
influenced me in my in writing my Eritrean constitution. And therefore, I, I follow events uh, closely. Uh, and uh, impeachment should be the last resort. Uh, uh, but but uh, it's apparently, it's going ahead. Now, in my own history, the emperor could not be impeached. The emperor was the law. He was the law. Uh, and the constitution of Ethiopia at the time uh, put it in black and white. His words cannot be questioned. He wor his word is law. Uh, and, and therefore, anybody who, tr who doubts that uh, will have, uh, they will not have their heads chopped off as in the old days, but at least he would be imprisoned. Uh, and, uh, and I was banished for, for questioning some of his policies. In the United States, we have a democracy, a wonderful democracy, which I think will survive. Uh, the attempts by some politicians to uh, subjugate the law to their pol policies and politics yes. have always failed. They failed because we have something much be be bigger than ourselves, the Constitution of the United States uh, and the law uh, that govern our lives. Uh, the United States of America is actually the shining hill, uh, uh, the shining hill uh, that guides the rest of the world. I believe in that utterly. Well, I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot with the comments on the p political situation here, but with your unique perspective, what you have seen, what you have seen in fighting for democracy all of your life and uh, believing in a constitution, writing a constitution for your homeland. It's a, it's a unique perspective, and we sometimes get caught up in it here and uh, we don't pay as much attention as we need to. And I, I thought you would have some, some comments, pertinent comments, and you did, and I appreciate you sharing that. We are out of time, Barakat. I hope we can have you back on the program. So much more to talk about. We uh, focus today on the uh, the book, uh, the new novel, Defiance in the Time of Chaos and Existential Threat. Barakat Selassie has been our guest on the program. Barakat, thank you so much for being with us on the program. It has been a privilege to have the opportunity to, uh, to have you as a guest on the show, and hopefully we can get you back and so much more to talk about. Thank you, Greg. Thank you so much. It has been a privilege. It has been our pleasure to have you with us. And uh, Defiance, uh, the book in the time of chaos and existential threat, the book available by uh, our author, our guest, Barakat Selassie, book available at Author House Amazon. Click on our website, thisweekinamerica.us, to get information on the book. And we're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.